The brain, a vast and mysterious landscape where memories are stored and hidden. But what happens when you explore beyond the surface? Down between those dark, cavernous valleys. Well, my friend, you've just entered the deep folds. Welcome to Deep Fold, where we explore the forgotten recesses of our deepest memories. And as this is the first episode, I thought we'd kick it off with some low-hanging fruit. That's right, everyone's favorite childhood trauma machine, The Brave Little Toaster. Now, I used to watch this movie a lot as a kid. However, I cannot remember a single thing about this movie, except for the terrible nightmares of me and my family being murdered in a junkyard. More on that later. But luckily for all of us, the entire movie is free on YouTube. Hooray! So, ignoring the fear and anxiety growing in the back of my mind, I grabbed some cinnamon toast flavored Kit Kats ghost toast and watched the brave little toaster and it did not disappoint if i had to describe the theme of this movie it would be death endless horrible death this film is absolutely a horror movie and i will not be convinced otherwise just listen to the opening scene This is a horror film. So if you don't know, this movie is about a group of appliances that go on a journey to find their owner, Rob. Which is already weird, because why would household appliances have such an attachment to some kid? Like, it makes sense in Toy Story because, you know, they're toys and that's their job is to make kids happy. But this is a toaster and a vacuum. What? Also, side note, the attachment the blanket has to Rob is way past unhealthy and super creepy at times. And we don't really know how long they have been in this cabin alone, but it's been a while since all the memories of Rob are as a kid and he's a full grown adult now. Anyways, the whole story gets kicked off when the house goes up for sale and the air conditioner's like, that's it. He's never coming back, and it's the junkyard for us. To which the gang replies with insults and says he's just jealous that Rob never played with him. Which must have hit close to home because the air conditioner has a meltdown and dies. He's dead now. And how do the other appliances respond to this horrible death? I didn't know he'd take it so hard. Well, he was a jerk anyway. So they decide to go find Rob by strapping a car battery to an office chair for power and head off into the wilderness. Now, the first thing you need to know is that these guys are not friends. They are not nice to each other. In fact, they often come close to killing each other. And no matter where they go, it always turns into a nightmare situation. Oh, look, a beautiful meadow. Wrong. And there's this super depressing moment where the toaster is running away from some animals and finds this flower all alone and the flower tries to pollinate its own reflection and <sighs> just watch. Why? Why is this scene in here? It's so depressing. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyways, at one point they start developing feelings of friendship for one another, and they are completely confused by this. So, uh, what's this thing with you and the blanket? What thing? You know, all of a sudden you're being so darn nice to him all of a sudden. Oh, that. Well, I was just thinking, and I got this feeling that I should be nicer to him for a change, you know? And now I feel better. Wow, that's weird. Hey, you know what we haven't had in a while? A nightmare sequence. Run. 
I told you this was a horror movie. <laughs> it's so needlessly terrifying. <laughs> oh, and then a storm hits. And the lamp sacrifices himself to recharge the battery. Blanket gets swept away into the darkness and the lamp is dead. Slow fade to black. Just kidding, it's still a kid's movie. I think. The lamp is just injured and they find the blanket in a tree. Anyways, the endless parade of death continues. As the vacuum swallows its own cord and almost dies, then they try to cross the river and, you guessed it, they almost die. Which brings them to the swamp, where the real horror begins. When the vacuum falls and gets swallowed up by a mud pit, and since they are all attached, they all get pulled in. And it's this long, slow scene of all of them coming to terms with their inevitable deaths. Blanky, can you let go? Try to untie yourself. I'm not scared. Concludes our broadcast day, a uh, week. Actually, it concludes all future broadcasting of any sort. Grim stuff. For the kids, though. For the children. Anyways, they get saved by some weirdo in the swamp who happened to hear the radio's music, but uh-oh, turns out he's a parts salesman who then proceeds to rip apart a blender in front of them for its motor, which from their perspective is super gruesome. But this is when we get the best song of the movie. Oh, did I mention there were songs in this? They get pretty wild. So the other appliances sing about how they're all gonna die painful, horrible deaths as their insides get ripped out. And the remaining pieces are put together to make a Frankenstein-like mess. But it is an absolute banger. Best song in the movie. Just try to relax. It's a house of wax. Anyways, the radio is about to get ripped open when the others knock the creep out by scaring him half to death. This incites a massive prison break and everyone runs for their lives. Even the dog escapes by stealing his truck. Wild stuff, but not as wild as the next part. We finally get to meet current day Rob who's going to college and wants to bring his old stuff from the abandoned cottage to his dorm. Because for some reason, he's all of the sudden really attached to his old stuff that he hasn't seen for like, what, 10, 12 years? Which really pisses off his new stuff, and they get really jelly. Then enters the most ridiculous moment of the film. Rob then heads out with his girlfriend, Chris. Nah, I'd believe my appliances had feelings before I'd ever believe this relationship is real. She drives a sports car for Pete's sake. This had to be some sweaty animator's fantasy or something. Anyways, they head back to the old cabin where they would have found the gang if they had just stayed home. That's what you call ironic. <sighs> Meanwhile, the gang uses ancient technology the Yellow Pages, to find Rob's new home address. They find Rob's place, but uh-oh, he's not home. But you know who is home? His super jealous new stuff. Oh, did I mention they are also murderous? Yeah, so they sing a song about how much better they are and how they suck and are unwanted, and that they should just go end themselves. And then they throw them out the window, effectively murdering them. This is for children. Luckily, the gang's got a man on the inside who sees where they are being taken, and then convinces Rob to go there to buy some cheap stuff for his dorm. What a legend. Which brings us all to the infamous junkyard scene of our nightmares. And let me tell you, it is the stuff of nightmares. It starts off with one of the most depressing, horrifying songs I have ever ever heard in a children's movie. All the cars sing about their past lives and how they are scared and confused about being here right before they're abruptly cut off by a brutal execution. And that's the song, sad story, followed by scared confusion, then death. And rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. It's so 
haunting and messed up. And now I know why I had such vivid nightmares about this junkyard. This guy right here is one of the most bloodthirsty killers ever put to cinema, possibly of all time. The lengths at which this guy goes just to kill some tiny random appliances is insane. At one point Rob finds the gang and you're like, oh, it's all over happy ending now right not according to this guy because he's like i'll just kill you all and he picks up everyone and throws them on the conveyor belt of death rob is about to die chris is absolutely useless and here's why the movie is called the brave little toaster because the toaster throws itself into the gears to be brutally mangled in order to save rob's life He's so brave. What a champ. And then Chris is like, quit dicking around, you idiot. Let's go. He legitimately almost died. Anyways, Rob fixes the toaster and they all drive away happily into the sunset. And that's the movie. Now, let me just say, I know I made a lot of jokes, but this movie is fantastic. Fantastic. Everything about this movie is done so well, from the storyline, to the pacing, to the overall animation. I mean, this story had a character with no face, and yet they were able to convey every single emotion possible. This is a great movie, and it is a staunch reminder of how far we've fallen in recent years of filmmaking. However, like I said, this movie is 100% a horror film, which I highly recommend for the upcoming spooky times. Anyways, thanks for joining me on this journey into the darkest parts of my brain. And join us next time as we go even further into those deep folds.